Today, it's Edwin's Monday Evening Property Rant. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, the latest post covering finance and property news. Another Monday evening. It comes around so quick. Edwin is back for another rant. Hi, Edwin. How are you going? I'm doing well, Martin. I'm doing well. I can't wait for the uh, new uh, fight between the kook uh, and Matt Barry. Like in, uh, yeah, Conor McGregor wants to promote the fight, by the way, uh, on uh, the uh, on, on the uh, that uh, uh, bare knuckle fight uh, thing that he's got going now. Yeah, he, he, he wants him on. Uh, that's what Dusty tells me anyway. I don't know whether it's true or not, but <laughs> Conor McGregor wants to promote that fight. Well, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? I tell you what, they've really got uh, got their um, gloves off. And uh, it is quite interesting just watching the um, the debate whizzing around. Um, I wasn't sure what to make of it, really, but, uh, you know, the other side of it, <laughs> he still doesn't realise Australia is one of the richest countries in the world. Those facts are so inconvenient <laughs> whereas barry's saying you're the biggest muppet on twitter hanging on for dear life <laughs> with god knows how many mortgages you're trying to service oh boy <laughs> well at the end of the day uh you, you and i've been saying and have said I've, i definitely have said it as well and that is that uh look australia is the richest country in, you know by with the the not only the resources uh the people the the you know the uh, the uh, a lot of the uh, sites that we have, you know, the the the, nat the, the natural aspects of it, uh, the geography, uh, yeah, and I consider it to be you know uh, the one of the best, if not the best, country I I in the world. Uh, and but the unfortunate thing is, is that we're we're stuffing it up uh, on a month by month basis, or shall I say, the politicians that which now I believe there's something like uh, uh, six hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, you know, uh, government employees and and growing. Or uh, Tarek put a post uh, on X uh, along those lines, and also had to remind Tarek and, and Matt Barry as well because they were commenting on it. Uh, and that is that the real estate uh, industry, the, uh, the the real estate industry, went from um, yeah you know, the twenty 2020 twenty or twenty nineteen figures as George and I were used to talk about it were around forty three thousand licenses and certificate holders. Uh, come 2024, now we've got uh, 67,000, uh, you know, licensed and certificate and active certificate holders in uh, in the industry. So hey, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you, we, depending on which way you say, what side of the coin you you, you fall on. Uh, the unfortunate thing going back to it is is the uh, the, the the jobs that have been created. Uh, you you could almost say that it's jobs for the boys or jobs for the for for those in the know, and, and the people that are getting richer are the ones that have and and the have nots and that chasm between the haves and the have nots is just getting broader and broader and deeper and deeper and and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of unknowns uh, in, in between so that's what's driving it you know, uh, fundamentally uh, you know I'm not uh, not a socialist not a communist not uh, in, you know uh, I believe in uh, that free spirit, that uh, uh, free economy, the uh, you know, and, and, and you got to make make it what you want. But it is getting harder and harder to 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 have a go, and, and that was our slogan for for many years, for many decades, you know, uh, for you know, centuries. You know, uh, uh, give it a go, have a go, uh, and, and that's why we you know, we learn from when we're young to you know, to fall down get up dust ourselves off and, and and keep on going that was the the Aussie spirit but but uh, it, it seems like the pollies just want to break it uh, and of course uh Steve Steve uh, Kukulis is the kook is uh, uh comes from that stock so uh, you know is it any wonder that Matt got under his skin <laughs> well that's a good a good point but you know we should just uh, acknowledge the uh, the data um CoreLogic's uh, latest Housing market now hits an eleven trillion dollars. That's a record surge in wealth. The um, increase in available stock: one hundred and seventy-six thousand new homes completed over the last year. Still well under the target, of course. And um, as a result of that, there are areas where prices are up. Although, interestingly, uh, the very next um, article that uh, was in the papers was talking about price cuts right 
<laughs> so hang on a moment, are prices going up or are they going down? And, um, uh, you know, it's an interesting little uh, question because uh, people were saying, well, it's a jackpot for some. But as you say, a new product report reveals the growing divide between the haves and the have-nots, sparking growing concerns about housing affordability. This one specifically is South Australia, but prop tracks data was actually for each state. And of course, each state got a got a significant mention. So it is quite interesting just watching the, uh, you know, the shenanigans going on. And uh, I don't know whether you've uh, been tracking some of the conversations, but it, it was, you know, interesting. Uh, Tom Panis, of course, um, was uh, quite gloomy uh, in his latest post. The Sydney real estate market is in a price fall. It's a great time to buy in the next few months. And I actually did a, a show in response to that because I actually said, well, hang on a moment. You know, the falls in home prices are accelerating. So what is next? And I went through some of the uh, the scenarios there. And then, of course, I also included uh, citations from uh, Ray White, chief economist, with uh, a discussion about um, what was going on. But I have to say, Edwin, that uh, I felt that uh, her conversation was, well, let's say a little bit selective. Yeah, look, but it, it, which side, you know, you know that, I mean, Merida does, you know, your old flame does work for, uh, she's the chief economist for Ray White. <laughs> so, so that she's got a she can't she can't uh, rock the boat too much there. And 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 Tom is an auctioneer. Uh, Tom is an auctioneer that would you know, usually conduct anywhere between twelve and 15, 15 auctions on a uh, on a Saturday. The takeaway from that from the commentary, uh, one of the one of the two commentaries that he made over the weekend, the the, the, the takeaway for for me was, uh, you know, the the the, the fact that uh, you know his. Uh, you know, he, he he didn't really allude more to the point of what's really happening out there, and that is the the, the vendors' expectations. Now, I know the agencies that 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 work or that give Tom the the, the work, and I know some of the boys in there, and and it all a lot of it comes back to uh, vendors' expectations, and the vendors' expectations have been uh, kicked way down the road or or, or way high. Uh, by by the real estate agents buying the listing, so it's a different. It, it's it, it's a it, it's another conversation that needs to be had. Uh, the 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 points that Tom uh, brings out in those, if you look at the the the, uh, the, the suburbs, then we're talking about you know three four million dollar suburbs, and of course they're going to pull back. We 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 said that they were going to that they were going to have uh, issues. We you know it, it's harder to sell a uh, as you say, it's harder to sell a dog. Uh, you know, uh, a lemon in, in, in you know, that's worth three, four, five million dollars uh, than it is to sell uh, a, a property where most of the activity is is between the um, you know, the the nine hundred and the one point five million, uh, and, and yeah, there's still uh, you know, there's still in demand there. But again, it, when you start painting things with a broad uh, brush. Um, even in some of his other commentaries on his other posts on social media, I mean, he was bragging about the high prices achieved for uh, some of the auctions. Although his uh, you know, closing rate was uh, four out of uh, four, four out of nine, uh, then yeah, there was uh, there was also other commentary uh, regards to you know uh, underquoting and and, and you know, as we said, uh, we are buying the listing and and, and also had a go at uh, at buyers agents. So it's. Whatever whatever gives you the likes, right? Whatever gives you the likes, whatever gives you the click click throughs, uh, wh whoever's paying the bills. What we what I can say, Martin, is people have got to be super cautious. Yes, there are more properties in in many parts of the Sydney uh, region, in many in many markets, in many suburbs, in many uh, areas or LGAs, whichever one you want to break it down to, whatever whatever it is that you're looking for. Uh, there has been there has been a growth in numbers, um, uh, and, and there'll be a bit more competition out there. But it's the expectations that are getting uh, that are getting uh, hammered first and foremost. Secondly, you've got to be careful as to uh, you know what you're buying in comparison to what was out there on the market three six months ago, and what people want to achieve for for the lemons that have been put out on the market now. Hence the reason why you know I guess a lot. Of, are becoming uh, are becoming wiser, but you still need there still needs to be um, you still need to tread 
carefully. You still have to navigate through. Just because it's on the market for sale doesn't mean that it's kosher. Just because it's on the market for sale doesn't mean that the extension is council approved. Just because it's on the market for sale doesn't mean that uh, that you're not going to be spending uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, or if not, like these poor bastards, uh, three three homes in the Blacktown LGA that have currently got a demolition order uh, across them because uh, they didn't do the due diligence properly and, and they didn't advise the uh, the conveyancing solicitors that, that there were extensions to the property and they didn't do the proper checks. Uh, and, and now it's going to cost them, one, it's going to cost them over $250,000 to... Uh, taken away from the value of the property. I mean, this is the sort of stuff that people have got to be cautious uh, about and, and they've got to be disciplined. So, yeah, so when you look at one story, uh, you, you, you yeah, people get all excited. Uh, people make uh, make all sorts of uh, commentary about it. And it's, yeah, it's it, it's good for a laugh. But when you, if you, the, the serious buyers out there need to get a lot more serious and, and discern what's what's good and what's just been put out there uh, on a whim, and they're and they're really expecting a dummy to come by and uh, and buy it. Yeah, and uh, we always say go granular, do your due diligence, and be cautious. And that's I think more than ever. And in fact, I ended my show yesterday with precisely that thought. Interestingly, the uh, data keeps coming with regard to the home buyers relying on family support as well. Uh, this is uh, another report this time from Macquarie Bank who said that 16% of buyers were forced to get help from their families to purchase a home. Their estimate was the average gift was $68,000, but some were high as 94000 In fact, my analysis suggests it could be even higher than that. And um, they also made the point that about 30% of people had renegotiated their home loans in the past six months. And it's worth no, noting too, I think, that uh, some of the banks have cut some of their rates um, you can probably squeeze in under 6% now on both fixed and variable. So, uh, you know, all to play for on one hand, but on the other hand, people need to be really, really cautious. And I think it's also worth just highlighting the impact of some of these changes. Uh, you've, you've probably been following, as I have, the Victorian story, Edwin, and uh, <laughs> there the housing slump is to hit the uh, Victorian budget, a $400 million black hole likely, because of falling values and Victoria's first home buyers have been dr driving a lot of the sales and could sway the outcome of the state budget. Um, the median house value has fallen around $15,000 to $735,000 over 12 months, they said. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, if you take it a bit broader than that, you can guess no surprises that uh, the whole question of what's going on with regards to property is now a very political issue. Um, you know, there was this one from the opposition leader in Victoria saying we haven't built enough homes and quoting the, uh, you know, the issues and blaming the incoming government. No surprise there, perhaps possibly, given what's going on at the moment. And uh, also it's worth noting, I think, that the, um, uh, you know, this even got coverage in the, in the, um, Seven, for example, put this up, you know, Victoria's staring down the barrel of a budget black hole as property investors leave the market. And I think that's the key, Edwin. Um, a lot of the story in Victoria is investors selling their properties and getting out, reducing, of course, the supply of rental property. But a lot of that property is not actually very good quality property. Going back to your lemons conversation. And um, boy, there are plenty of lemons in Victoria at the moment. There are, and the thing is that uh, uh, because of the draconian or the or, or the haphazard, uh, you know, uh, regulations that get thrown in willy nilly, and, and they want to try, uh, change things, uh, you know, uh, uh, overnight, it, it's it's you know, biting them hard, it's biting them in the you know, in the backside, um, yeah. But get, who, who would have guessed that, Martin? I mean, didn't we discuss these issues? Uh, or, or what would happen you know, if you kicked out property investors? Didn't we discuss it, uh, you know, uh, early to mid last year? Did, didn't we warn the people that the WeChat chatterers were, uh, you know, uh, had, you know, were pulling up stumps and were and, and were leaving? I mean, that was, you know, we 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 brought these up, we brought these up to the attention of of, of our followers and our and our viewers, and, and we were, you know, we were warning them. And uh, so now now you've got a a a huge problem. You've got two uh, two headwinds here. You've got one uh, the the properties 
aren't going back onto the you know onto the rental ledger. So you, you've got the ABC and others reporting the you know, huge slump in 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 rental properties. Uh, so you, you've got major issue there. Uh, the the other problem is is well actually there's three, but the other problem the other problem that you've got here now is for um, you know those that are holding onto property, those that didn't buy. Uh, their, their, their homes as you know, to invest. They bought their homes as principal places of residence. Uh, in some areas, they're pulling back, uh, you know, hard. Uh, in 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 some um, you know uh, markets of uh, Melbourne, I, I follow uh, Catherine closely in, in in her commentary in some of the parts of uh, Melbourne. What's happening there? And you know, and, and you can see uh, apart from that, there's obviously the the obvious. Um, you know, sales and sold uh, listings that come up on the on, on the portals, so you get an idea of how how some some markets are pulling back uh, hard. So the ones that are being hit are the uh, are the ones that didn't buy uh, as an uh, as an investment. They bought as a principal place of residence, so they're under uh, underwater uh, with their with their mortgages. And then you've got the the, the whinging government now. They're going to you know, whinging about the um, the fact that they don't really have their fix. Uh, it's a forty million, uh, uh, forty million uh, de- deficit. So, you know, well, where are they going to get it from? It's only going to so so. Yeah, you know, where I mean, it's the obvious, right? It's going to come from more taxes, more taxes. But in where, where are those go- taxes going to be uh, uh, applied to? Uh, so, uh, you know, God knows where. And and you've got people, you know, builders uh, are, are treading cautiously because we've also been looking at the numbers of the. Uh, blocks of land that are available for sale. They've just been growing over the over the years as we've been monitoring those as well. So nobody wants to really build there. Uh, investors don't want to touch it. So, you know, and, and this leads le- leads us, I guess, to uh, you know, to the, the the conversation that we were having uh, before, Martin, uh, you know, uh, earlier in the year, and, and that is that conversation around what will happen if, you know, uh, property investors across Australia are... Um, uh, are, are somewhat uh, discouraged uh, from uh, from yeah, buying into uh, yeah, investing and looking at other investment um, uh, vehicles uh, to park their money so that they can have um, uh, you know, uh, sustainable income yeah, in the retirement age. What will happen? And, and I think I think what's happening in in Victoria is is a very strong indicator of what would happen if they don't approach the negative gearing side of things with caution and, and they don't approach it and they don't adopt uh, you know, uh, a method that isn't going to scare the living daylights out of uh, investors. Because w- when you look at the stock that's on market in most of the, uh, yeah, m- most of the region of the, the, the Melbourne, it's where, where, where first-hand buyers don't want to buy anyway. So, and it's a type of property that they don't want to buy. It's out in the sticks, you could say, where there's you know, very little to no infrastructure. Uh, and but this is where where you know, where where investors uh, traditionally go to these sort of markets uh, to breaking ground because they they look for future growth in the you know in the in the property that they're buying, uh, and they're also look, they know that there's a that that the that the um, families or people that live in those regions uh, are, are your typical renters, uh, and they have been poor for many, many decades. So they're, they're trying to fulfil a, a, a role. Like so, you know, and this is where, you know, where when you and I were talking about this issue, um, you know, some time ago, we you know, we, we discussed and we were we raised the. Oh, I started, yeah, uh, like I said, liking the. If you got rid of negative gearing, in short term, in the short term, the um, the the renters are the ones that are gonna uh, are gonna suffer. But the, the question is, I guess, is how long will they how long will they suffer uh, for? Uh, is it going to be you know uh, yeah, two years, three years, five years before you know uh, will properties become cheap enough? Uh, for 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 many to buy in, yes, I know. Look, that um, uh, re- renters because of the, the the lower prices, you know, uh, some jump in and do become um, uh, homeowners. But I don't believe the numbers. I, I think it'll be in the low percentile in comparison to uh, you know to to what the, the media may uh, you know drum it up or pump it up. Um, 
you know, when you start looking at it, because of, as I said, because of the the location for, for, for these homes, for many of these homes, the desired areas are not the areas that a lot of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the home buyers want to live in. Uh, they've got very little, as I said, very little to no infrastructure. Uh, they're, they're, they're not, the new areas, the breaking ground, uh, the demographics are unsuitable for the, you know, because of the education needs, because of the uh, what, whatever other needs. So there are many, many, th- many um, um, stopples that, that prevent them from going and, and buying these properties. Here's the reason why, you know, uh, as of today, Melbourne has cracked the 30,000 uh, listings on market um, numbers uh, uh, according to the you know, domain in the Melbourne region. And, and you know, quite frankly, I think that those numbers could go to you know, 35,000. Uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be surprising before if, the, if, if we hit the thirty-five thousand before the end of the before the end of the year. But if you look at it historically, uh, you know, uh, or you know, a, a lot of those historically, a lot of those numbers were made up of apartments. But in this case, it's it's yeah, double the the amount of homes that there are apartments. Yes, there's a there's also a, a fair number of um, blocks of land for sale. But uh, I don't think things are going to change, and things aren't going to get better for for the Melbourne renters, unfortunately. No, I think you're right. I think it's going to play out over the next two or three years. And again, I've had quite a few one-on-one conversations recently with property investors in Melbourne, and when I take them through the exercise of saying, "Okay, calculate what the cash flow is on this property at the moment. So, how much are you paying out in terms of mortgages, management fees, repairs, and all of those things? How much are you getting in?" What's your prospective capital growth from this point forward? When you actually do all of that, from an investment perspective, more and more investors in the Melbourne region are saying, i got to get out. And, uh, of course, prices did run up. They then started to fall, and the falling pace seems to be accelerating for the reason that more people are bailing out. Now, at the same time, of course, um, you've got to expect government to try and find a way to fix this problem. Uh, and at the federal level, of course, simple, just reduce the lending standards some more. And this is an interesting article that uh, came out overnight uh, that uh, talks specifically about the Senate inquiry into the problem of lending and the lending rules in particular. And so there's an argument to suggest that maybe what you should do is to reduce, yes, reduce the uh, barriers for first-time buyers by reducing the lending standards some more. And uh, Baron Joey did a calculation to say that, uh, you know, you could save them somewhere around $37,000 on a $600,000 30-year mortgage. And uh, that means that you'd be saving a bit in interest. But i got to say, um, the whole concept, Edwin, of... Um, trying to prop up the property market again by reducing the lending standards when, one, interest rates are still extremely high, two, real incomes are hardly growing at all, and three, first-time buyers are being cajoled into buying bad property, those lemons in funny areas. Um, To my mind, this is not part of the solution that should be on the table. No, and again, this is is really looking at things... uh... Um, backwards, uh, but if we start looking at it from, from uh, let's say, uh, my logic, uh, my, my logical point of view, you've got you've got almost thirty thousand properties, uh, or over thirty thousand properties, uh, on the market for sale in the Melbourne in the Melbourne region, right? So, uh, how many properties did the government want, did the does the, the uh, Albanese and Co. Uh, Albanese and Partners Real Estate once want, want, wanted to build over you know, over five year period was it one point two million, right? So there are already established properties that could be could be bought that are vacant in in the Melbourne region or any other region for that uh, for that matter. And and this is the offer that I made to to uh, old mate Chris Ming's here in New South Wales. I'm happy to act for him as a buyer's agent and go and get him the Go and get him you know, 450 uh, apartments that that uh, he wants to build over the next uh, uh, over the next um, what was it over the next uh, three to five years. 
uh, or, or thereabouts. I mean, I, I could have them on, on the, you know, I could have contracts on these desks uh, by the end of the week, and, and, and you know, at a much better pro, uh, better price than what it's going to cost the government to build. So this is this is the whole irony of the whole thing. You you see these the, these properties that can be bought, uh, and, and a lot of them. Uh, you know, when you when you talk about uh, the, the listings across Melbourne and across, uh, you know, in, in the apartments that are available that are, aren't on the ledgers, uh, on the portals, uh, that are, are new, been sitting around for two, three years vacant. And there's all these properties out, out in the you know, um, outskirts of the Melbourne region that are also vacant. Uh, they're only what? They're only three, four, five years old. So they're not that old, right? So well, what are they waiting for? Yeah, put your money where your mouth is. This is this is how you start fixing the problem, not not uh, not not creating the green machine, uh, you know, the uh, green green machine construction uh, PTY LTD, and, and build uh, build dog boxes, or because they've got they've got a lot more glazing, uh, you know, to the facade. All of a sudden, they're meant to be they're meant to be a better proposition than what's been built now. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to cost a it's going to cost a hell of a lot more uh, to build, and this is the whole um, dystopian uh, you know uh, you know uh, world that we live in, and and I think that's what uh, the frustration that Matt Matt was feeling is in in in, uh, in in portraying and expressing in a way is how the the governments are really ruining something that that you know, that that we have, and we could be so much more prosperous, and a lot lot more people could be. You know, you know, sitting in a better position. So this is this is the whole um, what, what would you call it conundrum? Uh, this the whole uh, dystopia. This is the whole uh, you know uh, I, I don't know what's going on. Sort of uh, scenarios that that, that I, so it, so I go back I go back to your the the the, the terminology that you coined. It's all announceables, uh, all announceables. The bank want want to do this. Then um, uh, here's here's a novel idea. Why don't we just start giving uh, handing out uh, you know, new government grants and and, and you know, joint venture agreements uh, so that people in Melbourne can uh, uh, can can buy uh, into properties? You know, I mean, this is I mean we're we're going to see it again. It, it's this it's the um, you know that 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 will that uh, merry go round that keeps on going around and around and around. It, yeah, the population is just getting dizzy. It just gets dizzier by the month, uh, you know, and to the point where you, you got no other option but to yeah, you, know, you know, just to uh, you know, vomit uh, the crap that just keeps on that, that we're getting fed. But yeah, it's just uh, announceables, more announceables, um, and, and in the meantime, we're just going to see this, the, the, you know, the Melbourne market. Uh, property market continue to uh, to lift. Um, one of uh, one of my good friends and look, he's an avid pop property investor. Um, won't go into too much detail. Uh, I mean, he was uh, he made some sense, uh, uh, you know, in, in the discussion we had uh, a week or two ago with relation to uh, sooner than later, uh, Melbourne's going to become cheap enough. Um, uh, uh, it's going it's going to become cheap enough for investors to go back in. And I said, uh, I, I counted his argument to to say that um, whilst you've got these draconian uh, regulations in play at play, it, it, you know it, it's going to be a lot longer than sooner. Uh, and he was adamant that it's going to be sooner where I investors are going to go uh, back in and, and basically buy at the low, and, and then we're going to see the property market, the, the property. Yeah, property arena. You know, the media talking about you know the rises in properties again in the Melbourne region. Blah blah blah. Yeah, I sort of started to believe him to to an extent. He, he posed a very good uh, and convincing argument. Yeah, up until I watched that video uh, on that post uh, that we'll talk about later on in the on, on the rental numbers with regards to what is now happening with with with, with the legislation how it's playing out you know with the with the regulations uh, around um uh, around the no eviction notices and, and how it's been played out in the in the tribunals or in you know vcat uh you know and 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 and, and how how the property investors are, are really um 
really now feeling the pinch of, of those um, uh, you know, very questionable regulation in the, in the way that they're being um, that, that they're being heard. And quite frankly, a lot of these, uh, uh, quite a number of these cases that are currently being heard will become uh, will become precedent uh, moving forward. And it's really going to scare. Once it becomes more public knowledge, it's going to scare the pants out of uh, further investors. And hence the reason why. Um, you know, I, I went back to him today and I said, um, well, have you have you watched this video? Because and have you, you know, I, I've got to do a little bit more investigating as to see what's actually happening there in the in VCAT with the with these matters. Uh they'll 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 be up on Osley or or you know, one of the uh those um those, those portals and websites where you can actually read the whole thing. But it, on face value, uh, it's pretty scary. Basic, you know, uh landlords really uh to an extent. You know, um, you could say they, uh, you know, they've got no rights to 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 evict. You've got to, I mean, and and the cases weren't, weren't simple. Uh, and I encourage, as we talk later on uh, with the numbers, uh, you, you can get that link from the uh, from the fellow that posted it up on X uh, and, and watch it. I've posted it up on my feed. Uh, you, you can also go there, and it's just a recent post, uh, and it's scary. Absolutely. Well. There's a lot of moving parts to this argument, of course, and uh, you know, government policy is clearly off key, particularly in Victoria, but elsewhere too. Um, the quest to build more is also questionable. But for me, there's another interesting article which came out, which brings another angle to bear. This is actually this one here that uh, Mervac answers the call for three bedroom apartments. So this is uh, effectively a story saying that. The developers are now looking to build larger apartments. So rather than one or two beds, they're looking at three or four beds because they're more scarce. And the demand for large units is on the rise as more owner occupiers make the switch to apartment living. We've got some strong interests from many previous purchasers. Now, the interesting observation here is that there is, of course, an economic argument going on here too, because the research suggests that the three-bedroom new apartments are getting around a 45% premium compared to older vintage three-bedroom apartments, and they're attracting very sharp demand. So they're building effectively to meet a specific set of demands, and that's not just in Sydney, but also in Western Australia and elsewhere too. But my question here, Edwin, is does building larger apartments really help with the overall picture? I would argue that no, it doesn't really. What you're doing is you're actually allowing the developers to make more money through the process, but aren't really necessarily meeting the significant demand we've got, particularly from first-time buyers, for um, yeah. somewhere to live. So once again, it looks to me as though the economics are driving really weird outcomes. Look, and the pushing for four bedroom apartments in the in in Chatswood. I know some developers that are uh, that that are uh, going down that path because of the appetite of the uh, the, the 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 Hong Kongese, uh, that uh, that are coming over. I mean, they to them they you know, they used to living in a two bedroom apartment in a you know high de- you know heavily highly dense populated area. So when they come over to to, to Australia and then you know, look look what we've got. I mean they they're, they're paying uh, top dollar off the plan for um for some of these um you know, four bedroom uh, sites and, and you know and uh, reconfiguring uh, the, the 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 three bedrooms even. I, I guess what you got to look at is a uh, is a full rezoning uh, and the um uh, you know the the ratios that the councils are going to be uh, allowing. Developers and builders uh, to build because there's got to be a certain ratio of one bedroom, certain ratio of certain percentage of twos uh, and, and threes. We're probably going to be moving a lot more to uh, to your ones, uh, you know, because you're moving to a lot of one bedroom apartments that don't require uh, parking, uh, and if they're close enough to transport, you can even have uh, two bedroom apartments that are not necessarily required to have a parking spot. Uh, as well, so I can see that dro- that that being uh, pushed along. But yes, so if you've got a you know the, the there's going to be a, a 
you know, a larger number of uh, uh, three-bedroom apartments in a complex, well, then you're taking away from predominantly from the from the uh, the, the twos, and, and and therefore you're taking as you say you're taking away from uh, from that uh, achievable achievable price point for uh, even first time buyers. Absolutely. The other question is the other question there is Martin is is you're encouraging uh, greater family units to move in as opposed to young. Young, young, young couples, or or or, or single, uh, or singles, um, you know that, or with with no family, or as a startup. So you're going to have you, you've got to then you know have other uh, you know, uh, other um, um, you're going to are we going back to having more gyms? Are we going to have going back to having more common areas? Are we going to have, going back to having more uh, you know, recreational facilities? Uh, in the units, I mean, we do have them now. Uh, there are some, you know, some mega buildings being built in uh, along the uh, uh, Brisbane River, uh, where you've got, uh, you know, you know uh, on the second transfer slab, you've got a, a bloody swimming pool that just about wraps itself around the uh, the, the complex. But with it comes a price, yes. right? With it comes a price. One a price in uh, ongoing maintenance, and the biggest one of the others is uh, insurance. So, and it's not really, as you say, I, I don't believe um, uh, if they're lower density, uh, you could say, oh, well, uh, you, know, the, you know, those that have got more coin to throw around and they've got a secure job in a, you know, political, in the political lifestyle, life, maybe perhaps it's for them. But uh, for a lot of, it'll, it'll yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I stand with you on that. I don't, I, I don't think it's, it's meeting the, um, uh, the, the needs that um, many youngsters and young families have to to get into the uh, you know, stepping into uh, owning a uh, owning a, a a roof over the head. Yeah, and let me just come back on the point that you made. If you have a smaller number of owners in an apartment block, it doesn't necessarily reduce the costs of maintaining the apartment block, and in fact, quite often, because they're attracting a, a more market prospective purchaser, they're going to actually go out and push the boat out further with regard to perhaps, you know, high quality fittings and those sorts of things, but they still need to be maintained. And so by definition, the costs of managing that building into the future will not be lower. It will be probably higher, divided by a smaller number of vendors, right? What does that mean? It means that your strata fees on day one will be higher, but later, of course, they will continue to rise. And coming back to my conversations with uh, some of the one-to-ones this last week, um, it's the strata fees that are actually strangling property investors um, because they've gone up so much. And the fact of the matter is that everyone's expecting the fees are going to continue to rise. You know, inflation may be coming back slightly, but those costs are still rising. So I think people need to be really cautious when they think about apartment living and do the math not just on the purchase price, but also on the prospective maintenance costs and specifically the strata fees, because many people are being squeezed. And of course, if you have a big defect that pops out later, they're going to be squeezed even more. Yeah, and that's your sinking funds, and they've got to be managed a lot better. Uh, your insurances are just going to continue to rise exponentially. It's going to, uh, it's going to be very, very hard on your pocket. Um, uh, I, I've noticed a lot of these these swankier apartments of, uh, you know, they're the, the yeah you know, with the bigger price tags uh, are, are attracting the yeah you know, the high net worth individuals and and therefore they want a little bit you know, more bells and whistles mm. to you know, to even have concierges and, and and the like because so there's all yeah so look look it, it looks as I say it looks good on paper. It looks great on uh, glossy, uh, you know, glossy printed brochures, uh, but it's what it's what you don't see, and the and and the allotment to your unit uh, is based on the uh, square meter, uh, you know, square meter ratios, and and that is what you're going to be, you know, as you said, well, you're going to be paying, you're going to be paying more. The scariest thing for me uh, is the fact that I still don't believe that, uh, you know. Uh, 
you know, uh, you know, we 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 can you know, we we can count the builders, the first tier builders on one hand, um, <laughs> on the fingers of one hand, so that excludes the thumb that can actually build and and, and build proper, properly, and you can have uh, a 50 50 chance that you're not going to get hit with special levies in the future for um, you know uh, for, you know, to to prop up the sinking fund because of some uh, some issues. Yeah, and just going back to New South Wales, you know, we know, know that more than half of high rise have significant issues in them. That's been publicly reported several times, and I would suggest that may even be understating the issue. Let's move the conversation forward slightly. Now, let's bring the WeChat chatterers and the migration story together because there's some interesting stuff going on here. Uh, of course, the um, uh, Peter Pete Warjant. Uh, post here showed that there was 2.74 temporary visa holders in Australia as of August 2024. Uh, <clears throat> I thought migration was meant to be coming down. Um, student visas are at a new record high and um, a new high ex-visitors implying there'll be over 3 million on temp visas in the fourth quarter, according to the Australian Government Home Affairs Department. Um, how does this play into the thinking of the WeChat chatterers? As we've been saying all along, is they're they're not they're not phased, uh, but they are very particular and very clear as to what they're looking at. They're, they're looking at buying. They're, for them, it's it, because they're calling this period before the American election a, a, a rubbish period. In you know, like like we, we discussed in, uh, previously, like in a you know, in a game of footy when uh, when when one team is sixty points ahead and there's only ten minutes to go in the. Uh, you know, in the in in the last in the second half, uh, yeah, you know, and they've got no chance of winning. You have got to sit there and you know just bear it and, and that's call it the rubbish period in economic times. It's just waiting. It's just a wait and see. Uh, but they will move. They're still l- looking around, looking at other parts apart from Sydney. They're looking at other parts uh, across Australia where where they they feel they can buy low and they can um, and it's going to because it's going to attract. Uh, you know, a certain demographic. It's going to attract certain uh, movement in, in in demographics and you know, for, for people where they can have better control, have better yields along the way in terms of investment, you know, for, for their investments, and also have an upside on the um, the equity of the uh, of the property. So going back to your the the post that Peter uh, Wojcik uh, uh, puts uh, put out, and this is what they've been discussing. Uh, and as I've been talking about the uh, the classification of the uh, you know how, how the government's really bamboozled the rest of the population, and it's really not the numbers aren't really going down. It's just that we classified uh, uh, different visas under different names, and but you know if, if anything, we're, we're we're getting greater numbers. So they're still they're still um, embroiled or, or you know. Uh, you know, in the Sydney market, not as prevalent at the moment, but they're still looking for those properties that they can carve up into uh, into the many many internal units or, or or rooms where you where you've got your budget accommodation. So yeah, uh, other than just waiting uh, to to see how things are going to pan out more and and how the uh, the the Westerners are going to panic uh, as they listen to your Tom, yeah, you know, to your panels index, and as they listen to all, all the other. Uh, uh, all, all the other chatter out there and, and creating uh, panic selling and you know uh, they're just you know they're, they're taking advantage of, of of that. But what they are looking for, Martin, as I said earlier on, is they are looking for for your lower um, price points. Obviously, outside of the you now they they're looking they're looking further afield than your New South Wales. Uh, they're, they're looking for areas where. Um, they're, they're, they're coming in at a very low, you know, below your five hundred thousand dollar mark uh, to buy a, a freestanding home because of what's been what's been um, um, earmarked for the for the government to do in the future with uh, you know uh, national infrastructure. Uh, so they they're actively looking at that. Uh, I won't say where. I won't say what part, what, what state, uh, or what part of Australia they they're, they're kind of looking at. But one one of um, Conversations I had today was that um, there's a town in Australia <laughs> where two buyers agents uh, have between them have bought close to seventy properties over the last three months in the town, and it's really transforming and really reshaping uh, the the values and the 
you know, and, and the price points in terms of rentals as well as uh, uh, future values of, of, of properties. That, that's, what, that's what they do. That's how they influence markets. That's how they, they turn markets on its head like they did with the Melbourne market. That's how they're going to turn, uh, unfortunately, turn uh, markets on its head for, uh, for, for, for the, the, the average Joe that just wants a, a roof over their head where they could buy something for let's say four hundred thousand today, but now you know a month, two months down the track, they've got looking at the same property at uh, five hundred and fifty thousand. Why? Because of government spending the area, because of uh, investors that have just come in in the droves, and they just want to capitalise of that, you know, of the thing. Now, obviously, from a seasoned investor would look at uh, at these markets very carefully, which they do. They look at these markets very carefully, and they know it's. Uh, Potentially could end up being a one-trick pony, like we had many, yeah, many markets, many regional markets in over in WA in Perth, with your and also in 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 Queensland in the um, and in the Northern Territory, where you then you know one day there, you know, properties are fetching uh, 800000 eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars that will uh, a year or two years prior were only worth uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and then the next the you know, next month there are. Uh, they're back down to three hundred thousand. Why? Because that's all they were worth. But because of the uh, horrendous rents that, yeah, you know, the the fly in, fly uh, fly in, fly out um, uh, r- rental pool uh, w- was paying in order to accommodate the uh, you know, the uh, the um, people in the, that were working in these mines. Uh, you know, the you know, prices just went literally went through the roof. But then they fell on their ass. But it, it's. It's interesting. So whilst whilst they've turned their backs on uh, on Melbourne, uh, they're actively looking at uh, uh, at other uh, at other markets. But in terms of Sydney, they're, they're they're still there. They're just sitting on the sideline until and they're waiting waiting cautiously, waiting to see what what's going to happen. Like I said, for them, uh, what's happening with uh, with the politics over in America, uh, yeah, no doubt has uh, for that that it, it will play a lot. No matter who. No matter what uh, what ideology, political party, uh, you know, uh, takes charge of uh, you know uh, post the fifth of no, uh, you know fifth fifth of November there in America, um, they you know they feel that it's going to be a a positive for for the property arena here in uh, here in Sydney because at the moment everybody's just sort of sitting on their hands uh, waiting. So I won't go into too much detail with that. Because we're not a, yeah. You know, this isn't about politics; it's about property. But regardless of whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans, for for various reasons, one's just going to spur our market a bit more than the other. Um, yeah, uh, and but it's going to be positive uh, in, in terms of uh, people are going to be. They feel that they post um, the election is when we're going to get when people are going to get serious once again to come back in uh, either out of fear. Of what's going to happen around you know, globally, or or out of joy that the you know that they feel that the economy is uh, the economy is going to change for the better, and therefore they're going to be more comfortable with uh, committing to uh, you know, um, yeah, your thirty five, you know, 20, 30, 35 year leases, uh, 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 mortgages. Yes, and uh, I think the question, of course, is that Australia internationally is still regarded as a relatively safe and secure area to invest in relative to other countries. And of course, over the weekend, the Chinese authorities sort of rolled out more, well, waffle really, about what they were going to do in terms of the stimulus. It was very unspecific. And uh, most of the people watching the Chinese um, discussions would suggest that uh, what they're doing there is not necessarily going to help the local economy that much, which again, puts more impetus on people looking for more safe and secure places to invest. And uh, in a uncertain global world, Australia is still standing up as um, one of the places. Now, let's talk about the numbers because, uh, well, the numbers continue their trend. So this is the Sydney results for the seventh. This is based on the domain definition of the Sydney region, 20,569. And if we jump forward to the 14th, 21,043. So a further rise. And Edwin, that really shows it in your chart here, that we are now definitely um, seeing a continued acceleration compared with the trend from last year. And um, no surprise, really, I guess. 
No, it's spring. We're getting a lot more on on market. The the numbers are are going you know hand in hand. Apartments and and freestanding homes are are pretty much on par with the you know uh, the, and they're being consistent. Uh, the we are we are tracking you know, two and a half thousand more than uh, the, than what we were last year in comparison to last year, but uh, n- not much of a difference with twenty twenty two. As I said, there's a lot of uh, uh, political, geopolitical uh, headwinds that are that are that are you know got uh, people on the sideline. Uh, it's not so much. I, I, I guess my my version of what I see, what my my um, um, description or what my version of what I'm seeing out there is, uh, people still people still want to buy, regard, regardless of of the the. The yeah you know, the interest rates um, regardless how high they they appear to be uh, there are still buyers but they're just being more cautious as to what they buy which is a good thing which is a good thing for for buyers and this is what we've been sharing what we've been uh, uh, encouraging people to do you know prepare your 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 home to achieve a better sale if you're in the in the on the side of wanting to sell uh, don't get fooled by the selling agent that just wants to, to to market the property and take it out as is, or or, or not to or do very little to it, or, or because they just want a quick commission. Uh, if you're going to buy, uh, prepare and and invest, you know, in the right tools and and get the people around you to uh, the, the the right professionals around you to help you uh, to 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 make sure that you're not buying a lemon uh, because you know they're the ones that will crawl under the uh, uh, under the house, they're the ones that will potentially see the stuff that you don't see because, you know, and and they can negotiate with help you negotiate with uh, the, the selling agents that that uh, you know are unnecessarily looking after their client. They're looking after their back pocket, so you might get a better deal. Uh, but, but unfortunately, because you're just uh, the majority are just buying one the the one off, that they're un- unable to see a lot of these things. But look. Um, in many parts of Sydney, you could say that it is uh, pretty much a buyer's market, but there are there are still suburbs and areas and markets in Sydney that are, um, uh, you know, homes are still being sold for a lot more than uh, than you know, and inferior homes are still being sold for a lot more than what they the superior homes were being sold three six months ago. So it's really, uh, if I could use the term that uh, is often thrown around in the uh, yeah, uh, in the industry, it's very choppy, uh, very choppy across uh, 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 across the board. But uh, again, we just encourage people to just uh, pay a bit more closer attention because you're not buying you're not buying the you're not buying the pretty uh, the, the glossy bro- brochures or the or, or the photos online, and you're not buying the, um, the 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 staging furniture that they use. You're you're you know, you you you're buying something a lot more and and you're going to be inher- inheriting something that could uh, be devastatingly costly in the future. Yeah, and just talking about the variation across Sydney, of course, um, uh, as Tom Panis highlighted, Albo cancelled his auction of the investment property in Dulwich Hill, and it's now for private treaty. And uh, Tom was talking about the fact that uh, in the current environment, it's quite hard to get um, a lot of people coming along to an auction. And therefore, it makes more sense to probably go private treaty, which I thought was quite interesting, given his role as an auctioneer. Well, the the thing, Martin, I I counter his argument there, right? Because, look, I I don't know what you think, but I I think the the, the majority of the people that were going to go and bid on that property, uh, on Albo's property, um, yeah, they because of the pretty glo- uh, the, the glossy brochures and the very light, very very light uh, before you buy uh, building report that the agent was handing out. Um, that would convince it was a good deal. So I, I believe that uh, the agent at first may have had anywhere between six and twelve uh, participants, and yeah, you know, in between there that uh, we're, we're going to re- register at the auction. But but they watched our show. <laughs> they watched their show, and and uh, and then they said, "Yeah, no way, Jose." You know, uh, and they started doing their numbers. Potentially, there's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of rectification work uh, to be done to the to to you know, and to get it up to scratch, get it up to speed. I got to spend one hundred and fifty thousand on top of yeah, you know, whatever I want. So that's 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 my 
take on it. Uh, I, I believe that uh, um, 90, 95 to 98% of the people that were going to participate at the auction watched their show and they said, yeah, stuff it. Yeah, if, they want, if they want me to make an offer, it's going to be at 1.7%. Well, it could well be. Who knows? Let's go and look at the Melbourne data just to comparison. And it's interesting because on the 7th, there were 30,169 properties listed in the Melbourne region. A week later, 30,024. So, in fact, the listings number dropped slightly. But it is, again, I think, important to underscore the mix between houses, apartments and land, for example, and townhouses. Houses all the way, really. Yeah, it's uh, you've got you know, close to nineteen thousand um, houses on the market for for sale, just over eighteen thousand, and and only you know uh, yeah six thousand eight hundred uh, uh, apartments. It's it's interesting. It's interesting how the uh, you know the um, that, that mix is, but well, interesting to when you look at just the pure numbers there, the the, the mix, but. I guess when you know over the years what people were buying uh, as investment properties there in Melbourne across uh, you know, in the in the Greater Melbourne region, uh, where where and where people where investors from uh, uh, mainly you know, New South Wales uh, were, were buying in the regions were the you know, a lot of subdivisions. No different to no different to what they you know investors uh, yeah, in the majority tend to buy in Queensland as well in the Queensland market and also over in Perth. Which is your you know, in your new subdivisions in your, in your, your new home dwellings, which for yeah obviously two reasons: one to to get a a, 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 a better return on investment, get a, in own, in own a parcel of land, as well as you you, you know, have um, you know, that depreciation because they were new uh, new developments. But the apartments in in Melbourne it's it's an interesting um I'd like to talk to Catherine a bit a little bit more about it as to uh what she sees with 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 the the, the apartments and perhaps it's because there's really you've got a lot of students there and you've got a lot of uh you know uh, a lot of apartments being you know, built closer to the uh to the CBD than what we have here in um, in Sydney we're, we're yeah, you know, we've spread out a little bit more. I guess we've got a lot more apartments on the on the go that they did. I, I'm not sure. I don't really study the Melbourne market as much, but it is an interesting uh, point. Um, which, yeah, you know, then then again, it, uh, you know, uh, all, all we know is from even for, for from what Ben Kingsley put out there in his tweet is that you know, one thing for sure is all these draconian, um, you know, uh, uh, legislations, uh, guides. Uh, uh, mandates, whatever you want to call them, taxes, levies. Uh, it's just um, you know making it harder for, uh, for, for for the rental pool uh, there in Melbourne, which is another reason why you know, uh, investors want to get out. Yeah, and it's interesting. This chart shows the total active residential bonds in Victoria, the annual percentage change, and you can see here. Uh, June 24, a significant drop relative to uh, previous years and the growth previously. And, you know, we've been calling this out for some time in the Victorian uh, context. And uh, all of the issues that he itemises there from, you know, government intervention and higher taxes and all those things, tenancy reforms, are all part of the story. And um, I'm afraid that uh, I don't see that turning around because the forces driving property investors in Melbourne to quit are getting probably more extreme rather than less extreme. So expect more of the same ahead. Um, I guess if we then go on and look at the, um, uh, let's look at, hang on. If we then go on and look at the Brisbane, if we go on and look at the Brisbane story, um, we can see that on the 7th, 4,166 Next week, 4,077. So again, a, a slight fall, not dramatic fall, but you know the, the Melbourne and Brisbane stories are so, so different. And we can see that coming through in the auction numbers too as well, that, uh, of course, with various holidays and things that were whizzing around, the numbers are a bit distorted. But nevertheless, um, the auction stats would suggest, well, you know, some movement, but not a dramatic movement. No, it's just got got uh, as we keep on saying. It's it's just an interest point in in a point uh, in the in the markets that um, 
you know, uh, just creates a little bit, uh, a bit of conversation. Uh, that that's you know what what was really uh, happening last year as well. But uh, I guess the, the the thing is is uh, as we said earlier is is really watch watch what you're what, what you're buying for. And because the auction campaigns, uh, what I have noticed is that the auction campaigns have even been shrunk in a lot of a lot of. Um, uh, properties from you know, four. We thought four weeks was a short auction campaign, but now some are going to a three-week auction campaign, and to to create a little bit more urgency uh, for potential buyers so they don't lose them as as new properties come on the market. And more of a reason why you've got a shorter period of time to do your due diligence. Uh, and this is where we continue to stress the point. Um, no matter how short a period of time you have, you got to you got to do what you've done this to to you know by hook or by crook. That's got to be done because um, you know uh, if you especially if you're going to be as I said in some areas where you're paying uh, you know uh, uh, upwards of two million dollars for uh, for a property, uh, it's you know it, it's it can be devastating. Uh, and this is why I'm going to be uh, I'm putting out going to be putting out more of my old posts that so I used to post uh, you know, a few years back as to the what I would find in the uh, on a weekly inspections uh, that as we yeah, do for our clients yeah not not necessarily identifying the property but uh, identifying the, the the issues of what agents don't don't tell you. Uh, are inherent with the property, and and they just say, oh well, it was bought like that. The owner bought it like that. Uh, we don't really know. Uh, you know, we don't really care. Uh, we haven't. The owner hasn't had any problems for the last ten years. But as I keep on saying, it's not so much that you may that the owner may not have a problem, uh, may may not have had a problem with the neighbour for the last ten years, but they may not necessarily like you as the new owner of the property, and they'll complain to council because they'll know more about the property than what what you or the agent yeah um and this is an interesting everyone if you look at the uh post that we posted a little while ago and was put back up again uh you know just because it's on the market for sale doesn't mean it's okay and uh, that means you need to do your due diligence inexperience will fall for the airbrushed campaign due diligence will walk away unless a reasonable compromise was negotiated with the vendor, don't hold your breath. I think that's a really, 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 really important warning. Because the truth of the matter is that um, if you do um, buy a lemon, then the costs later continue to burn, and that's the problem. Yeah, look, that, that one of the agents is trying to call me. It's uh, seven sixteen, and he's trying to call me. It's about a property that I've asked him. Uh, I've asked him if. Um, you know, if, if the extensions is council approved. Yeah, get on, mate. Uh, it's Edwin here. You, 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 you've been trying to get me a couple of times. Sorry, I couldn't get... Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. One, one, one of the many favourites. <laughs> yeah, just want to find out if you you, you or the owner knows uh, whether or not the extension's been... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but as 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 you know, as, as you know, just because they bought it like that doesn't make it that it's council approved. And if the neighbor, if the neighbor complains and my client buys it, and the neighbor complains because they don't like <clears throat> they don't like my client uh, because you know they may cook different food than what he like likes to cook or whatever re other reason or barking dog or whatever, then he's in the shit and they'll, he'll get a demolition order. So. Um, uh, uh, so other than that, you, you can't tell me anything else. I'll, I, if I want to pursue it further, I'll have to go to council and check it all out. No, that's okay. Well, I'll talk to my clients anyway. If they want to pursue it, I'll I'll have to yeah you know, I'll go to council and find out and and dig up the the old records. <clears throat> Yeah, and and do, do you have a do you, do you have a building uh do you have a building report on it by the way? Sure, sure. Yeah, that's right.
No, the, yeah, the, yeah, oh, well, yeah they, they bought it years ago, but it doesn't mean that it's... Uh, yeah, anyway, look, let, let me do my uh, uh, D&D, and then I'll, um, uh, I'll, give, uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted. Uh, if they want to pursue it, yeah, I'll, I'll go get the plan through it. But, yeah, but, uh, yeah, anyway, leave it with me. We'll go from there. Oh, they, move, they, they want to move into the area. Yeah, no, but, I'd, yeah, that may be a nice home. It looks pretty on brochures and on the, on, uh, on the internet. But uh, when, you, when, when you get a demolition order and it's going to cost you 250000 to rectify, it doesn't look pretty. It's not pretty on the on the back pocket. <laughs> well, I've been in this situation before. Unfortunately, a lot of people. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't do the due diligence that they don't do it properly. Look, there are there, there are a number of properties around Sydney that I know of that are that have now got issues with uh, with the local councils. So that you've got yeah you know, you've got a demo, yeah then they've got demolition orders uh, uh, over them and and you can't even get a BIC now. Because the councils won't allow you to do a BIC, um, a building information certificate, which you might know it as a reverse DA, because it just doesn't that doesn't meet the um, the, um, the the local council uh, controls. That's all right. No worries. All right, Chan. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. And there you go. <laughs> plain ignorance, plain ignorance all the way. Okay, so let's just quickly cover the rental story. This is for Sydney on the 7th, 11,644. A week later, 11,820, so a slight rise in Melbourne. On the 7th, 10,984. A week later, 11,181. So a rise. That's on the 14th. But it's also worth uh, just noting this, uh, as Edwin tweeted, um, the Victoria's landlord tribunals are a disaster. This is a really bad story, Edwin, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's what we were talking about earlier on with, the, with matters of, with regards to um, uh, you know, uh, no grounds eviction notice uh, in that are being heard and that are falling in favour of the tenant. Uh, I mean, it's it's scary. You you really if you go if you go to my post uh, there that I just uh, posted earlier on today, and you look at the um, the, the video that uh, Matthew Camazuli posted there uh, in the discussion, the the interview around that, and and he uh, fills in uh, all the details. As I said, I'll, I'll need to go and look at uh, VCAT. Or if the decision's been written up, it could all, already be on Osley and and see the outcome because they're, they're, it's going to be precedent. And this is what's going to scare the living the living crap out of out of investors, uh, yeah, uh, in the near future. And and people are going to be too scared uh, to rent. And the, and and Turpy puts out yeah put out a a a, a, a post on, on my feed there, and he, and he basically. You know, hit the nail on the head. He says what they don't realise is uh, this will drive the divide between, uh, divide even more. Landlords will be even more selective with prospective tenants, leaving all the vulnerable in the too hard basket. And that's, that, 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 is, that is a trend. Whether you like it, whether you like to hear it, or whether you don't like to hear it, that is what, uh, that is what happened. But it doesn't mean that you're not going to have issues even with the ones that you've, that, that you've chosen. Um, but it, it, it's going. It's 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 getting very scary uh, with what's happening with the rental, um, you know, um, world there in in, in Victoria. Spot on, Edwin. Well, as we come to the end of the show, just time for your tip of the week, and this is about powering up. Yeah, look, people need to power up. Uh, ben Fordham, uh, we shared we shared something along these lines before when we we're talking about the price of electricity and the cost and the uh, as the coal. Uh, coal-fired stations were, you know, were being uh, 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 turned off, and and you've got issues with, and basically you you, know, uh, you started having yeah you know, talking about issues in Melbourne, uh, brownouts, blackouts, 
uh, you know, parts of Adelaide and uh, because of the reliance on uh, green energy. I'm not against green energy. I'm just uh, it, it just the way it's, things are ro- rolling out, things are playing out um, when it becomes uh, cumbersome and troublesome. So, look, uh, basically, uh, after after what uh, Ben uh, posted, uh, that basically the big four banks are boycotting, boycotting coal. It's going to become harder and harder. So, yeah, power up. Power up because... Um, not only because of what's already happening, but now this uh, and more uh, that, that we're going to get hit with and, and greater costs. I mean, it's uh, are we going to be having uh, your brownouts and and, and blackouts, uh, you know, moving forward and uh, throughout summer? If we get a swelling uh, uh, summer, then then potentially yeah, the, the the grid's just going to be overloaded and more electric cars, more electric this, more electric that. So uh, I'm just going to say to people as a tip, uh, power up, uh, get a change over uh, diesel petrol generator to yeah, to connect to your uh, uh, to, uh, yeah, to your main uh, switchboard. Um, and you know and if you're in if you're in Sydney, DM me, uh, you know, be in Sydney or the greater Sydney region, uh, I can get my sparkies. That do all the work for us uh, to 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 help you along uh, uh, along you know, to to have something that something ready cost effective that you could um, you know, literally flick a switch and, and get it you know, kick started to to manage your um, your, your your food lighting uh, and your obviously if you you know, uh, e- internet and, and those sort of stuff around the house something uh, simple quick and it's a it's, yeah, you know, switch over, um, you know, change over switch that gets the generator going uh, uh, for that period of time. Because the last thing you want to do with the cost of uh, uh, food and everything is, you know, your whole fridge, your whole freezer goes to waste. Uh, you know, so who knows, Martin? It's just getting. Uh, we we just have to be more and more prepared. Yeah, uh, you know, with this whole. Uh, uh, not not being. I'm not down on green energy as such, but it's just again the way that the government's tell you half tell you things don't tell you other things and the way it plays out and you know uh, who's getting a kickback we don't know what's got, what, what's happening but it's again all we know is that uh, uh, you know, things that aren't as robust as what they used to be and things are costing a lot more uh, than what they used to and the last thing is you want to have a lot of wastage on and not have services that potentially could also be um, uh, life-threatening, uh, you know, services because you know you might be running the dialysis or or any other medical uh, e- equipment at home that uh, that that you require, and it, and when he goes off, he goes off. That's it. The power's off. You know, good point. In fact, uh, when I was at Thoreau, we had a very large battery system that uh, allowed us to keep the power going. Not least because, of course, Jill uh, needed the um, power to her. Um, oxygen compressor so that she could continue to breathe, but also so, so I keep the internet going in the studio and uh, other things. Um, it costs a bit, but it saved our bacon on a number of occasions. And, uh, you know, we had outages not just for a few minutes, but for hours. And uh, this system still worked. And uh, I have to tell you that when you're the only house in the block that's got light on and power on because nobody else <laughs> thought about it, you feel a bit smug, even if you had to pay a bit to get there. So I think it's a really important warning. And the uh, expectations from the authorities monitoring the production of electricity versus demand is suggesting that uh, over the summer and next summer in particular, there will be significant pressures on the uh, on the power system and they may have to uh, load shed and things. So I think that's a really important uh, observation, and particularly I think as the forecast is that it's going to be a very warm summer, even a very wet summer as well. So uh, worth thinking about. Edwin, I want to say thank you very much. Great show as always. We will tell our viewers that next Monday won't be a rant. It'll be on Wednesday of next week. So we'll um, be a couple of days later, but it will still feel like tomorrow afternoon because these comes around so quick. <laughs> That's right. Where are the days going, Martin? We'll see you, see you next time and uh, have a good week, Edwin. Take care. All the best, Martin. Take care. Bye.